first question, Michael, is um, as CTO of Siemens Energy Management Division, what are the specific challenges and opportunities that lie ahead of us all? Well, the electricity system is in the middle of tremendous change in of our overall energy system. We see more and more renewables that need to be integrated, like here on Ireland, wind power plants, uh, photovoltaic, solar power plants. Uh, that's on the generation side. That has to work hand in hand with conventional power stations. Uh, and they all connect to the grid. And on the load side, uh, we now have new infrastructures connecting, uh, like the electric car. And uh, if you analyze energy systems, you'll see that electrical energy, the usage of electrical energy, is key to reach sustainable uh, infrastructures. Uh, so we will see a rising importance of electrical energy within the next uh, decades. It's good to be an electrical engineer in those days. <laughs> How much of your organization is dedicated to research and development? And what kind of break notable breakthroughs have you guys achieved in recent years? Within Siemens, we work in an integrated fashion. So if you look at overall uh, Siemens, around 10% of our workforce is uh, dedicated to R&D. That's, that's tremendous. That's tremendous brain power. And uh, what did that brain power or swarm intelligence uh, come up with? Uh, what one uh, innovation I really love is our HVDC Plus technology. Uh, this is technology with which we can form uh, a very nice uh, sinusoidal out of a DC voltage, just uh, out of the silicon by stacking silicon power electronic modules uh, on top of each other. And this is a really breakthrough. Uh, before that, bulky transformers and magnetics and filters were being used, and now we can just form uh, such a nice waveform out of the silicon and up to very high power ratings beyond a gigawatt. That's what I'm really proud of and uh, what I always like to mention. In terms of then um, the big trends and challenges uh, that will change how we view energy in the world, um, you know, the move towards distributed energy systems, for example, um, you know, how will that change the balance of power in terms of how energy is provided, not only you know, from companies, but also from com companies and communities and how they can engage in the grid. One uh, major change uh, with respect to the times when I was educated as an engineer in the 80s is that now there are a lot of uh, possibilities to produce electricity on the premises uh, of residential homeowners, for example, or supermarkets by using photovoltaics. We have also excellent combined heat power generators. We should not forget uh, that concerning end usage, most of uh, end usage goes into space heating or space cooling. That's in many countries uh, more than a third of the overall uh, end usage of energy. As we uh, turn our houses more and more efficient and as we strive for sustainable infrastructure, we will see that electrical energy is, will be used in more and more and to a higher share of those infrastructures. As an example, heat pumps or direct electric heating via, for example, infrared uh, lighting. Um, electromobility is one example where we uh, gradually are now uh, changing infrastructure from a combustion engine to hybrid engine and maybe full electromobility. Um, so uh, electrical energy uh, will be in the center of the energy system of the future. And actually, it already is. Uh, you cannot uh, operate a modern society without electrical energy. It's not possible. And we will use more of it. If we talk about digitalization, that also requires a lot of energy. If you think of the data centers being built uh, nowadays. Electrical energy is key for our modern society. And electrical energy is key for a sustainable world. And in terms of... Um the attempts to move towards renewable energy. Um, you see companies like Apple, for example, you know, make claims of powering campuses and shops and everything with renewable energy. There's talk of a Apple renewable energy data centre, for example, in the west of Ireland that will be 100% renewable powered. Um, is 100% is renewable energy a realistic uh, goal or is it a pipe dream? Um, you can do it, but not without the molecules uh, being produced by Renewables. Uh, and the reason is that uh, the, the majority of renewable power uh, will come from uh, solar and wind uh, power plants. Of course, when you are blessed with hydro, you will, uh, of course, use hydro. Uh, biomass is a very local uh, 
topic. We don't have enough uh, planets uh, to power the planet on biomass. So it will be a hydro, wind, solar. But it's variable. Wind and solar is variable in nature. So we do uh, have to bridge sometimes extended times when there's no or not much intake. And that can only be done via fuels, fuels that we then would have to produce before from renewables. And one example is uh, power to gas. Uh, it's producing hydrogen out of electrical energy, basically splitting water into oxygen and hydrogen and storing away the hydrogen and using it uh, later uh, for bridging uh, those gaps. The technology is there. There's also uh, the storage uh, facilities are there, uh, also the technologies then for re-electrification via either gas turbines or fuel cells. Um, so uh, as we are approaching more and more such a drastic scenario in countries where there's not as so much hydro, we will see that power to gas kicks in. Uh, another uh, uh, way that we will utilize more and more is building interconnectors because uh, interconnectors allow uh, to, sh put, to transmit electricity from places uh, uh, where there's a very good potential uh, to others and uh, thereby also make uh, use of uh, daytime differences, maybe uh, different seasons, if you go north, south, uh, for example. So to go 100% renewable requires the molecules produced from renewables and it requires a, a grid, transmission grid built out, a worldwide uh, Electricity Grid, World Wide Web. Mm -hmm.